So welcome, welcome back. This is obviously the uh, trebuchet. Um, it's been quite a few years since it's been fired now. Um, and today what I want to do, I want to show you how we load it and how we fire it and just have a look around a few bits really, because um, in the videos where we're pulling sort of engines out of cars and you know whatever else we're doing, firing washing machines across fields and patio heaters and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, yeah, well, I want to show you what, um, what sort of running gear it's running. Uh, have a look at the straps as well. Uh, just recently I went to Warwick Castle because they've got one of these as well, quite a full size one. I'm not sure which one's bigger, whether it's this one or that one, because I've never actually measured this one and I've never actually been able to weigh it because it doesn't fit on the weigh bridge because it's like, far too big. But that was quite interesting. So I went over to Warwick Castle and had a look how they load theirs because we were very limited with time on, you know, we want to put a, like a winch on this in the future so we can pull the arm down but I never really got round to it. So at the moment, we just sort of stick the JCB pallet tines on it and pull it back to load it. Whereas this one here, they obviously sort of walk round to sort of load it, you know, running it round like a hamster in a wheel. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I went and met uh, the Treadmaster called uh, Mark. He was really helpful actually, because there's, there's not many people about who know how to load trebuchets and stuff, because this is centuries old technology. So it was uh, really interesting getting some pointers as well, because when we used to fire it across the field, it was really inconsistent. So we'd fire it across the field and like, you'd never get this steel weight to go in the same place twice. And uh, he was saying the same thing. They have the same problem and they've fired theirs thousands and thousands of times. You can actually go and see it. So we went and watched it. It was, uh, it was really good actually. So yeah, let's go and have a look around and uh, we'll have a look at the running gear first. All right, so the first thing we've got, we've got ADR 10 stud commercial axles. Uh, they're off company up their road, they were quite helpful and um, we fitted them onto it, had to make them wider. It's running 560 60R22 five tyres, big flotation tyres so it can take the weight. Every time you fired it, it sort of, it rocked backwards and forwards because, because it's on wheels and I think that might have given it a bit more power so as it, you get that bit of momentum like that, it just gives it that little bit more oomph. This is obviously the weight swinging round. Um, it's empty at the moment, but um, I think it weighs about weighs about five six hundred kilos empty, and it will take about two big JCB bucketfuls. So I think we'll get if we filled it completely up with stone, we'd be about six, possibly seven tons. So uh, we only used to be able to put three tons in it though, because at the time I had like a, a three and a half ton lift JCB, and that's all we could lift up with it. So now we're obviously I've got the swift cut plasma cutter. We could probably make some bits to obviously make a winch system to winch it up so we could like literally fill it all up the way but you know it still had plenty of power because when we pulled the engine out of the car and it pulled the gearbox and everything out even with like three and a bit tons in it it was seriously powerful so what it would do with six or seven tons in it that'd be that'd be quite interesting uh, i've got some cables to tidy up as well that'd be a future job um so on the front here we saw we had a, a big draw bar that we put on that goes down here. And the idea of it is, it doesn't steer or anything. So what you do, when you hook the tractor up to the back of it, it picks up and then it picks the front wheels off the floor and it just steers on the back. So it's uh, quite easy to use. We can sort of move it where we want. We can't really move it from here. As soon as you take, even if you took the arm off, because um, up to the bearings is, I think it's nearly eight meters high to that point. We can't even get it under the power lines or the BT line. So. I think it's just going to stay here, unfortunately. This is the uh, fire locking pin. It sort of just goes in that hole there like that. And then when the arm, arm comes down to here, it comes down here and then you push it in like that, that locks it. And then this strap, you can see how long it's been here. Look, it's all gone green. So we would um, we'd put that over there and then pull it out. We, we used to just put it on the end of the JCB and just pull it and then that pulls that pin like that, which then releases the arm, but then it pulls the strap the whole length of this. Uh, I think the strap was, I think the strap was eight meters long as well. So another one at Warwick Castle, they said it's 22 meters high. And I, I, I just don't know how much this is. I'm sure it's like eight meters to there and then probably another eight meters on top of that. If not, it's gotta be more, cause look, that arm's massive. Um, I can't even measure it cause I can't, I can't actually get up there with anything. I haven't got anything tall enough. If we get it down in a minute, we might get the tape measure on it. So, and then, yeah, so like I say, the straps on top of that, 
Uh, when it fires, wow, it's got some, this video here, it's got some real power, like firing it, these big steel weights up in the air. We'll have a look at the steel weights in a minute around the back. But yeah, that's the drawbar system. It has got a handbrake system on it as well. It's got brake, yeah, obviously we just ratchet it on if we want to put the brakes on, but never really needed to do that. So um, yeah, that's good. If we go and have a look at these steel weights, this is one of the ah, solid steel weights that you used to fire. Uh, what we did, we sort of, it was a bit of box section. We packed it with sand, like wet sand, and then welded the ends on, make it as heavy as possible. And then the way we wanted to fire that, we, we tried to use loads of different methods. Like we had like a ton bag that holds like 800 kilos and we put it in there, but every time it fired it and did the flicking, it would pull through the bottom of the bag and just tear a hole. And then we tried like a steel chain, but um, like a cage, but the bolts all kept coming loose. So this bit here, this is what we came up with. So this is like a, this is like a massive towing strap. I got it from AgriLink and we, uh, we cut it down because it, it was quite long. It was probably about six meters long, this strap. And then what it does, so that sits there like that. Ah, and then that sits in like that. And then it, it hugs it. So that's how, so that's how it works like that. It sort of hugs it. Obviously this, it was all loose, but now it's sort of been sat here in the sun for four or five years. It's all gone a bit, yeah, it wants, uh, wants sorting out. But yeah, so that would sit down this end here. We'd load it here. And then when we'd pull the pin, the weight would come down and the, uh, the big arm would pull the strap the whole length of this. So it'd literally pull it all the way along there. And then as soon as it got to that end, it would start the, start the rotation. It would just like swing it around, just chuck it across the other side of that field somewhere. But yeah, I won't be throwing this today. I just want to get some uh, ideas of how we could improve it. I don't know many people online who would uh, have any good ideas, really. But right, let's get the JCB and see if we can uh, see if we can load it up. So I put the pallet tines under just like that, and then we uh, will boom the JCB in, and then that will pull. Whilst we're booming in, we lift up as well. So which will then pull that down and load it. Oh, that's because it's too light. Pull back a bit. Pull back a bit. That's it, keep zooming back, keep going back, keep going back. Bit more, bit more. Bit more, bit more. Bit more. Oh look, there's all water dripping off of it. Go on, bit more, bit more. Nearly there. Keep going, and I'll put the firing pin in. Keep going. All right, we've got it. You can let go now. Bit more. Bit more. That'll do. So this big towing strap here Obviously you have two of them. You have one down there to that little releaser thing that we had a look at a minute ago. So one side would be tied to one side and then the other one would come back this way. So bring this down here and then, yeah, so that goes there like that. And then uh, the other one, it would come back and it would go on this bit of bar here. So the one we saw at Warwick Castle it was actually a banana shape and he was telling me that that's quite a good way of releasing things which was quite interesting so this one here we used to just hit it with a hammer and it'd either be like that in the middle or like that so i don't really know what the answer is because it was wherever you put it it always released differently so it's quite interesting really but that's something to look into as well but right we're going to just fire it with one strap on like that just make sure everything still works make sure the bearings are all all right and um See how we got on, really. Right, let's fire it. Now I'm going to pull the firing pin out and it'll give you a rough idea of how it sort of works, but we'll watch it and see what happens. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Oh, it's real slow when it's not got any weight in it. Oh. Oh. 
So we we now we know we need to put some weight in it. That gives you a rough idea of uh, how it sort of works. Just load it up again. Right, so we're going to fire it again. Just ain't got enough weight in it, look. Obviously, because it's empty. And it's hit that up there. But these are all things we need to work on. We'll, uh, we'll have a look at it and uh, see what we can do. So you can see the weight, like I said, it's just not got anything in it because I didn't want to leave a stone in it so we can, uh, we'll get that filled up again. And we need to devise this winch system on how we do it. We, know we need to pull that arm down there instead of keep using the JCB all the time. That was the first time the bearings have sort of moved in four years. So, well, I guess that, you know, they probably want a bit of grease in them or something like that. Um, probably these bearings as well, because there's four bearings. There's the two stub axles at the top there, the ADR axles. And then there's those two bearings in there as well. And I think they've probably, probably got a little bit rusty over the years, because I've just sort of pulled it out and just fired it and see how we got on. But uh, probably wants a little bit of maintenance. So if you've got any ideas, um, put them in the comments. And uh, if you want to see all the full videos, go on Colin's channel and uh, have a look at how we got on firing it. But this was just a bit of an update really as you know what it's sort of doing and what we want to do with it and you know where do you think we, what what do you think we should do with it because we can't move it but like i say we want to get that weight filled up so thanks for watching that hope you enjoyed it hopefully i'll get some nice comments we're going to move on to the swift cut plasma cutter now because we've been doing some farm signs for a friend and hopefully they're going to turn out really good so come and join us in the workshop and we'll have a go on the plasma cutter right so we'll just come back in the workshop and uh we're back using the Swift Cut Pro and uh, we've just been making a couple of little fire pits or having a go anyway. And a bit ago I said I wanted to sort of do some signs and other bits and bobs and using the machine itself is fine, it's very, very easy. But for someone like me learning to draw on 2D CAD, it's not too bad and I can just about do it. But it's easier if someone sends like the design like my mate here We've plugged like a memory stick into the side that's got the drawings preloaded on it. So he's done that on his laptop, brought it down, plugging it into the side, then just uploading it to the computer just to cut the, uh, cut the sign straight out. So we're going to have a go at doing that and see what it sort of comes out like as a bit of a, bit of a test. So we've got a few bits. Um, Bringham Park Farm. That's where you're from, isn't it? That's right, it's our farm. And then you've got, because yeah, you're doing diversification, you've got toilets and showers, bell tent, horse box, yeah. bit of diversification. So you're going to put these signs on... Well, we've got the entrance to the farm, we've got uh, access to the glamping pods, um, yep. toilet and shower block, and then fire pits, which hopefully will sell. Um, Tom's going to look after me with a good deal for the plasma cut whenever I need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Right, so we're going to cut. Oh, we've got to put. So these are on the nesting sheet at the moment, but we just need to move these about, do we? Yeah. So we've already cut some of the fire pits out on the table. But we didn't do a very good. Yeah, but we've just got to move these so that we're not cutting where we've already cut to try and make use of. Uh, we could have so we, we could have put them on a bit better, but we were just messing about with it and just having a play, weren't we? Yeah. So hopefully we can use the other end of the table now to uh, cut that sheet out. Yeah. So we'll move them about and we'll shift these over here. Try and make some room. Yeah. Try and get them as close as each other as possible. Yeah, and we just have to have a bit of measure up where we had that hole in the other corner. But this is going to take a bit of cutting all this lot, isn't it? Yeah, a few minutes, but no problem for that machine, is it? No, it's not. So just, what, are you going to move that so, Brigham Park yeah, farm? Move that as well, yeah. Move that up there like that? Yeah. So it's all on one side sheet, so it's up there. It. And we've just got to avoid that triangle that we cut out earlier in the day. Well, that I cut out. <laughs> yeah, that Thomas, uh, Thomas told me he's really good with this CNC and then... That was good, didn't it? 
So where's that going to go? On the farm gate? Right on the main road side, so people know where we're coming in. And then the other one we're about to print, which is real smart, <laughs> that'll go on the gate. Wait, so you got, we're going to do I mean, a big one? if you're coming down the road at 40 miles an hour, you're going to see that, aren't you? Are you going to paint it or anything? Yeah, probably black, I think. Looks smart, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, happy. So yeah, we've got well, the whole... Some metal legs. Got, got those little bits there. Man. Got the outcuts in the middle. So we're going to do the big sign at the top now. Yeah. And uh, see how that goes. So the next sign we've got is a bit more complicated. Very complicated. We've got trees and leaves and geese. And... We're going to give it a go. We've just positioned it so it's going to cut it out just here. Like that. And uh, we're pretty good. All right, let's give it a go. Give it a go. She's going home first. We're pulling it out. Yeah. That looks good, that does, doesn't it? <laughs> it's mint, isn't it? How good's that? Yeah, that's well smart. Well, I think that's a lovely one. Right? We've just finished, and um, these are the results just here. So I don't know if we're going to uh, have them rusty or anything. What do you think? I'm not sure. Your rusty idea is quite nice. It's growing on me. I was going to paint them black, but I don't know if they look rusty. They look smart. So you've got your signs here. There's your fire pit just there. Toilets and showers. The main farm sign. Um, that's for the bell tent camping for the horse box. So it's a start anyway, isn't it? Yeah, we have, uh, I think, Many more to come, hopefully. Like I said before, using the plasma cutter is very, very easy, but it's the it's the drawing. So uh, luckily we had a chap, didn't we, up north? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he just kept, we just rang him up and said, I'll oh, draw us this. Five minutes later, he'd, he'd send it by email to you, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And then we just put it straight on the plasma cutter. So that's been, that's how we've managed to do all this, because... If that's easy, isn't it? Doing circles and dimensions, that's easy, isn't it? But yeah, it is. Doing all the writing and the animals, it's layers of lines and he knew what he was doing, didn't he? So. Yeah, well, we're not very capable of that stuff like that. But, you know, we're going to hopefully learn it in time, but at the moment, it's probably easier if someone wants a sign doing, saying, yeah. email me a decent drawing and then yeah. we'll just cut it out. So. That was a good one. Right, thank you.